So today I'm gonna to be going over how I set up storage spaces, set up drive tiering on Windows 10 for my use. So in Windows 10, I like to have a single large volume for a lot of my files, things like Steam games and other cache files. The stuff isn't super important to me. It's relatively large in like the multiple terabytes, so I don't wanna put it all on SSD, but I also don't wanna just deal with the speed of hard drives. And I like using storage spaces tiering for this because it allows me to have a relatively fast volume that is relatively cheap for me to set up so I don't need any other resources and just generally works relatively well. The problem with storage spaces is it isn't super talked about how well this can work and a lot of it's hidden under PowerShell that can be relatively confusing for someone who hasn't used PowerShell like this before. So I'm gonna try to make it a little bit easier and just show what I do and how it works so you can have a better idea of if it might be a reasonable solution for you. So let's go over the hardware setup I have. So I have a relatively normal gaming desktop here with a Ryzen chip and stuff I'm using. I have four two terabyte hard drives and I have two of these LSI warp drives, which to the OS show up as four 100 gigabyte drives each. And those drives can be used fully independently. So in this use case, I'm gonna have a total of eight 100 gigabyte SSDs and four two terabyte hard drives that I'm gonna be putting into a tiered storage space. Now let's talk a little bit how storage spaces works. So storage spaces is a little bit different than a traditional RAID system where you have one uniform RAID among all your drives. Storage spaces takes all your drives and puts them in a pool and then your virtual disks actually have the RAID on it. And that way you can have multiple different RAID or redundancy levels or cache levels amongst one whole set of drives. So I could have a whole set of drives and have a simple volume of RAID zero a mirrored and a parity, and that data shared among the same pool of drives, which can be great for a lot of use cases if I have some more important data and I have some less important data that can handle different levels of drive failure. Storage spaces can also do tiering in this, and tiering differs from the more traditional caching that you see as it adds the volume of the storage, the high-speed drive to the low-speed hard drive, whereas most caching just uses the drive to store data that's already on the other drive. So think of it as when it does a tiering operation, it does a move from the low speed drive to the high speed drive, where a lot of caching will just do a copy. So it's on both drives. The advantage to that is if you have a two terabyte hard drive and you cache it with let's say 500 gig SSD, you now have 2.5 terabytes of usable space. With traditional caching, you still would only have two terabytes of fully usable space. And the drive would only be storing a copy of data that already exists on the caching SSD. The disadvantage is if the SSD fails, you lose all your data because that's the only way some of that data, because the SSD has data that's stored on it that isn't stored anywhere else. The other big disadvantage I see with storage spaces, especially in Windows 10, is it's relatively difficult for users who haven't used it before to use it. A lot of functionality is hidden in PowerShell and there's not a great GUI for it in Windows 10 and even the Windows Server I'd say GUI is quite bad in my opinion. And also because it's fundamentally different than most RAID systems, you kind of have to learn and think about it a lot more than with something like a more traditional RAID where you just have a simple volume it makes. But I'm gonna go over my process. I worked with a lot of storage systems, so this kind of makes sense to me and hopefully I can make this make a bit more sense to you if you wanna try doing something like this in the future. Looking at my computer screen right now, the first thing I have open is an administrative PowerShell window um, that I have running. And then I also have the GUI for storage spaces, which is in control panel. You can just search for it and start and it should show up. And a lot of these have some similar commands and they actually can be used in both. So if you make a storage um, space in the GUI, you can actually add and change virtual disks in PowerShell. It's the same system they're touching. I'm gonna be doing a lot of commands in PowerShell because that's why I'm comfortable and it makes more sense for me, but I'm gonna try to show how you can do it in control panel if that's more comfortable for you for the steps you can do in control panel. So the first thing you have to do is prep your disks. So what you want is you want all your disks to be unformatted and to have can pool set to true. If can pool can't be set to true or isn't, um, the easiest way I've seen is just set clear, disk, and then number, and whatever the number of disk is, so 10. This essentially does a wipe of your disk. Sometimes you have to use the remove data flag if there's data already on the disk. This will wipe all your existing partitions, so make sure there's no data you care about on the drive. And essentially, you want all the drives to show up in here with the black bars, which means there's nothing on them. 
there's ways to make this automated so it automatically finds the disks you might want, but for a desktop use, it's a lot easier just to do it manually and not think about script. So now all my disks are ready. The way I can tell that is if I do git um, physical disk, I can see that they all have can pools being set to true, and they all have the black bar here and they're ready to use. So all my disks are now ready to be put into a pool. So I can either go into storage spaces, collect new storage pool, it's gonna ask for admin privileges and just have all my disks selected that are unformatted and click create pool. You can also do this in PowerShell. The way I like to do it is set disks to a variable of git dash physical disk and then can pool is set to true. So this will make a storage pool of all the drives that have can pool set to true. Make sure you don't select anything that you don't accidentally want to. In my case, that's not an issue. And then I will get get storage subsystem um, friendly name. So this is gonna tell me the storage subsystem friendly name, which is something I need to create a storage pool. So now I'm gonna run this new storage pool command to create my storage pool. So the full command is new storage pool, which is the program that does this. Storage subsystem friendly name is what I copied from git storage subsystem here in quotes because it contains spaces. Friendly name is the name I set when I create it. So this is just what it shows up to me. So I just set it to Ryzen Gaming. And physical disks is this variable disks, which was set up here, which is all of my disks that I have can pool set to true. So I'm gonna go run this, hopefully. There it goes. And I see a little thing running. And also what it's gonna do is it's gonna go hide all my disks from me. So I don't see them here. And if I also take a look at something like Task Manager, all my disks are now gone. So it hides the disks. Um, and sometimes you see disks hidden in Windows. It's often because Storage Spaces takes them. And if Storage Spaces takes them, it doesn't let normal disk management things see it because it wants you to mess with the higher level virtual disks that you will create and not these low level physical disks. Also looking at the size, it says eight terabytes. That looks correct. So now I can start getting ready to do the caching setup and setting up storage tiers. So you essentially need to set up storage tiers to tell the system what your fast tier and what your slow tier should be on these drives. Now I'm gonna run a command to create a storage tier. So now that I have the storage pool of drives, the tier is gonna contain just the SSDs or just the hard drives. So then when I set up the tiered pool, it knows the two different groups of data that it should be balancing the fast data on and the slow data. So the command I'm gonna be using for that is new storage tier. Storage spool friendly name is Ryzen Gaming. Friendly name is gonna be simple SSD, so that's the name that I'm setting for this um, storage tier. Provisioning type is simple, so that's essentially RAID 0. It's only stored on one drive. And media type is SSD. So now this is gonna create a storage tier with all of my SSD drives in it. And it looks like it's a typo. I wanted resiliency setting name instead of provisioning type. So that's what should be set to simple for my use. The other options are mirror, so it stores two or three copies of the data, or parity, where it uses parity to spread it across multiple drives. So I've created that, and now I'm gonna do the same thing, but with hard drives. So I'm gonna call it simple HDD, media type HDD. So now I've created two storage tiers, so I can also use the command git storage tier, and it shows me that it's two different storage tiers that I've created, one with my SSDs and one with my hard drives. So now I'm gonna create two variables that store the data for the different types of storage tiers. So I'm gonna have an SSD T, I'm gonna call it, which is just my SSD tier. And then I'm gonna have one called HDD T, which is gonna be my simple HDD. So now I'm gonna use these two commands to create the actual virtual disk. And the virtual disk is gonna have the data stored on two storage tiers, which is gonna be then spread across all the hard drives and SSDs I have. Here's the command I'm gonna be using to set up my new tiered virtual disk now that I've created my storage pool and my tiers. So my command is I'm gonna say new virtual disk, storage pool friendly name is Ryzen Gaming. So that's just the name of the pool. Friendly name is game, so that's just whatever I wanna set the name of the drive I'm creating tool. That's just gonna be nice for me to access it by that name. Doesn't matter for the actual system. Storage tiers are SSDT and HDDT. So those are the two tiers I set earlier. And then storage tier sizes are how much of each tier to use. So I'm gonna be using 100 gigs of my SSD in this config and 1,000 gigs of my hard drive. But I don't really want that. So I'm gonna actually set that a bit bigger. So I'm gonna set like 700 gigs of my thing and 7,000 gigs of my hard drives. Resiliency setting name is simple. Number of columns is 
Simple, simple essentially means that it's writing to um, all the drives, essentially RAID 0 in this case, it's being written to one drive at a time. Number of columns is four, so that means it'll write to four disks at the same time. Whereas by default, it'll write to one column traditionally, or sometimes whatever the auto for columns is. So that often can be really bad performance because it'll write a chunk to each drive instead of splitting that chunk out to all drives. So this lets me get better performance. This is essentially tuned for just performance. This is a huge RAID zero. So if any drive dies in my setup, I lose all the data. But for things like Steam games, I find this is a reasonable setup because I can easily re-download it. And write cache size is set to one gig. From everything I can see, it means that writes will go to the SSDs initially, then get put together, then they can be written to the hard drives better that way. Um, I've tried tweaking with this. It doesn't seem to make a huge difference in my experience, but really it matters. Um, and one thing it'll get mad at is you have to use GB instead of just G. So now it's created it. I have a pool that is 7.52 terabytes. And this drive will now show up in disk management as a 7,700 gigabyte drive that I can initialize. One thing you can do later on is you can resize the disk to make it bigger, but you can't make it smaller. And also it's only fixed provisioning for the, for the tiered drives and you can't use the um, thin provisioning so it'll only use a little bit of space now that it's empty. But now that I have a disk created, I can initialize it. So this puts a partition table on it, create a simple volume. And the one thing to note with storage spaces tiering is REFS is much better than this than NTFS. If you have Windows 10 Pro for workstations or Windows 10 um, Enterprise or Windows Server you're running, I'd highly suggest running REFS as it's much better at it. REFS manages the tiering stuff in real time, whereas with NTFS, it'll kind of go behind the scenes and move blocks around every day. REFS just works a whole lot better if you can use it. But for this demo, I'm just going to be running NTFS because that's what comes with Windows 10 Pro and Home and stuff here. So I'm going to just leave this all by default, format the drive, and in a few seconds, it's going to give me a drive with some other drive letter. I can also see this drive being created here, and it just says a Microsoft Storage Spaces drive in Task Manager, and I can see how big it is, and it's still working on formatting it. It's likely running trim for my SSDs to make sure they're fully blank. The other thing I can do if I want to see more details about its performance is use Performance Monitor. Performance Monitor will actually show you quite a few details of how it's writing to disks. So if I want to add the little plus icon here, I can now go under, um, under Performance Monitor, under Add Counters, I can say All Instances and click OK. And the pool I like to typically use is looking at it as the actual numbers. So then I can see how much data on each of the disks is being used. And now I have a program like Crystal Disk Mark, which I'm gonna set on my D drive. Maybe let's set a big volume and say all. So Task Manager will show that it's starting to write the data to it. And I can see that my simple SSD that I set up is taking all the writes right now. And it's gonna pretty much push everything into that SSD until it starts to fill up. And as I said earlier, REFS manages a whole lot better than NTFS does and there's a job for it to optimize in NTFS to do it. And this crystal disk mark result, it'll take a while because it's a very large size of 64 gigs, but it will um, look like essentially a SSD RAID 0 performance wise, because you actually have to fill it up quite a bit more and benchmarking cache drives can just quite a bit be a pain because it's how much do you benchmarking the cache versus the actual drive. Now let's talk about expanding storage spaces tiered volume. So storage spaces lets you expand the tiered volume. You can't shrink a tiered volume or any other storage spaces, virtual disks. And it's actually pretty darn easy to do it. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just say get storage tier. And after creating a virtual disk that's tiered, you're gonna notice you get new ones like games underscore dash simple HD and simple thing and it'll start showing you size and footprint and pool and other things. And these are created when you create a pool and it's essentially the tiers that the virtual disks use. And if you wanna resize that um, virtual disk, you essentially say resize storage tier, the friendly name of those newly created um, storage tiers that are only in use by that virtual disk and the new size you want it. Unfortunately, the normal resize virtual disk doesn't work because that only works for standard ones, not tiered ones, it'll throw an error. And um, I can't seem to find a way to get the use maximum size that you can normally use when creating a virtual disk that uses as much size as it can. So that doesn't seem to work here. 
So my lazy way to do it without scripting is to just put in sizes until you get an error. So I'm gonna go do that now with simple HDD and I can set that to it was 700, so maybe we'll say 7800 gigabytes. Um, it's not that, so maybe I can do 7750. Um, and it looks like I'm actually right on the limit, so maybe 7701. Uh, so it's already essentially at the limit. And why this can be so annoying is that it's gigabytes versus gibby bytes. So a hard drive is two billion bytes or something, but computers don't use the zeros, they use two to the power of something. It's a different unit, it's really annoying. So that's why your two terabyte hard drive or something here shows up as 1.8 something gigs. But I've expanded my SSD one a little bit, so now I can see I have my new volume, and if I want to extend it in the GUI, I can just say extend here, and now it's slightly bigger. And now what I wanted to talk about a little bit ago when it comes to performance and how well it does. So now I just have a huge file copy coming from my NAS at about, it looks like, a little over one gigabyte or about 150 megabytes per second. And it's slowly putting it on here. And I'm gonna just let this run, but if you give it enough time, it'll eventually stop putting data on the simple SSD as it fills up and put it on the hard drive. Um, the defrag command in Windows can also show you a little bit more advanced details about how much data is on which pool, but eventually it'll start putting it on the hard drive because it just doesn't have enough free space. And if you don't use this data you've put there, it would eventually move less of it over to let you put more high speed data on. So now I've finished copying all the data to my system and I can see after a little bit how it stopped putting data on the SSD and started putting on the HDD as it filled it up to the point that it wants to let it get filled to. Um, once it gets full, it starts doing a bit more shuffling and performance does get worse because now it has to actually use the hard drive more, but even then it's not too bad. I use it to store all my games and while it's not the fastest it could be, I don't have any performance issues loading in the games. I do video editing for these videos and some other projects on this works perfectly fine. I can play like multiple 4K ProRes HQ streams at the same time. Offloading camera footage is very snappy. Um, and generally it's a pretty good experience, a lot cheaper than full solid state. I've been pretty lucky with it. Um, it is pretty unsafe when it comes to disk failure tolerance, but I keep it backed up and don't store anything super important on here. And just to do a little more tweaking, I'm gonna try it using REFS this time. So I've set it up with REFS, which is generally okay with compatibility. There's some weird issues, but it does support tiering a lot better. I have the REFS details pulled up now and what it'll often try to do with REFS is be a lot smarter with moving data and when to move it. So I've seen that helps a lot, whereas NTFS is kind of dumb and doesn't know how to do it, so it kind of moves it under NTFS every night, whereas REFS is real-time updating it, or it should be. Um, let me know if you've tried this and any thoughts you have on it. It's definitely not a perfect solution, but I'm pretty happy that it's free with Windows and generally good. And also it's pretty powerful in the way that I could also set up a parity drive if I wanted something more redundancy or other things. I can relatively add, easily add disks to it. It's harder to remove them though because um, I can't shrink a volume and it's pretty nice. Thanks for watching this little video on storage spaces on Windows 10 and let me know if you have any thoughts or questions.